Next segment will focus on the availability of personal bonds in cases involving mentally ill defendants. Let's start at the beginning with the question of what is a personal bond? Uh, there are three kinds of bonds that are available. A cash bond, uh, a surety bond, also known as a bail bond, and a personal bond. The key point here is that personal bonds do not require the defendant to put up money in advance of release. Existing procedures under Article 17.032 already authorize personal recognizance bonds in cases involving defendants with mental illness. This procedure is already available. The statutory amendments that we're going to discuss are ways to increase the effectiveness of this option and make sure uh, that the option is available, known, and can be used in its circumstances where it's appropriate. Key to that is that the statutory amendments that we're discussing uh, exclude defendants who are charged with 13 specifically identified violent offenses. Excluding defendants who are charged with those violent offenses, a magistrate shall release a defendant on a personal bond, notwithstanding Article 17.03b, a bond schedule, or a standing order, unless good cause is shown otherwise. As we go through these revisions, uh, the good cause standard is going to come up again and again. The point being that it was built into the statute and is reflected in the revisions in a way to make sure that personal recognizance bonds are available, but they are used in appropriate circumstances. And if the circumstances are not appropriate, then there are other options to address it. A personal bond is to be used if the defendant, again, is not charged with and has not previously been convicted of a statutorily defined violent offense. The defendant has been examined by a local mental health or IDD authority or expert under Article 1622, and a written assessment has, has been provided that concludes that the defendant has mental illness or an intellectual disability and is nonetheless competent to stand trial and recommends mental health treatment or IDD services for the defendant. Personal bond is to be used if the magistrate determines that appropriate community-based mental health or intellectual disability services are available and the magistrate specifically finds that release on a PR bond would reasonably ensure the defendant's appearance in court and the safety of the community and any victim of the crime after considering all of the circumstances and a pretrial risk assessment. Again, the individual judgment of frontline magistrates and judicial officers is reflected in these statutory amendments. The contemplation is that a PR bond is going to have conditions on it. Unless good cause is shown, the magistrate shall require outpatient or inpatient mental health or IDD treatment or services as a condition of release on a PR bond, as recommended by the local authority or another qualified expert. In addition, the magistrate may require compliance with other conditions reasonably necessary to ensure the defendant's appearance in court and the safety of the community and the victim. We will turn next to the new statutory additions to existing procedures addressing competency and competency restoration. 